Hello, Shubhu Panchumi. The puja is knocking at the door, and I know you are otherwise busy. But still, like puja icha ino tun juto, we want a new video before puja. So that's why I welcome you back again to my channel and to the series con quiz, as you know, serial chemistry through conceptual questions and answers. And today we have the session three. Uh, of course, we have some aims, including to support you preparing for exams like uh, IIT JAM, NET, GET, etc. And today we will be discussing MCQ and MSQ, all are taken from IIT JAM exercise test previous year papers. So, let us start with the first question. So, as I have already mentioned in earlier videos, that after looking at the question, you just give some pause, explore over the question, try to answer on your own. And when you are ready with the answer, come back with the question, right? So, this kind of uh, questions, how uh, usually you solve, uh, we go for a charge and mass balance. So, you naturally get two equations actually, supposing m number of bulk and m number of beta. So, it is very simple that uh, that gives you the first equation if you uh, balance the mass 4m plus 0n is 4. So, m is 1 and 2m minus n is 0 because on both left and right it is 92. So, n is 2m or 2. So, we get 1 alpha and 2. So, the option A is the right answer. Okay. The ionic strength of 0.1 molar aqua solution is. So, it is a straightforward application of the formula where m i and z i you know the terms, the concentration of the charge, concentration of the ions, charge of the ions and what are the ions? So, Fe 3 plus and sulfate 2 minus, right. So, you look carefully that the given concentration is 0.1 molar, but I am using m 1 and m 2 as 0.2 and 0.3 and clearly and obviously because of the number of ions after dissociation it is 2 and 3 respectively. So, it is now simply put the values and you will get the answer 1 for 0 0.3, okay. The carbon oxygen bond in an organic compound absorbs EMR of frequency this. Uh, so, it belongs to what region of that EMR spectrum. So, this is a bit informative question and you have to know uh, this information that where actually infrared is to. Uh, it is 10 to the power 12 to the power 14 in the within uh, that. So, the given question uh, answer to this given question is infrared region. Well, three molecules are there, and according to the equipartisan principle of energy, the CV molar heat uh, capacity at constant volume follows the trend. Which one is correct? Of course, you can use uh, uh, your idea and knowledge of uh, degrees of freedom and equipartisan energy principle calculation. Uh, but there is a tricky way, and that is simple that all three molecules are three atomic or triatomic, n is equal to three, but Sulfur dioxide and water are nonlinear, and carbon dioxide is linear. So the values of sulfur dioxide and H2 must be, must be the same. Uh, so A and B both satisfy that. But in A, carbon dioxide is also same. But that is not possible because carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. So that value would be different from the other two. So only option B is the okay. This is also an informative question. You have to remember the uh, formula for En, and which is clearly proportional to z square, okay, fine. The correct statement about ionization potential is, so you know these are very basic questions of from uh, periodic table and if you can op, uh, guess for the, the right one, then you do not need to ponder uh, the other options. Uh, here you know the one down the table more and more new orbitals are added, so psi increases and energy needed to eject electron is lesser, so uh, IP decreases. So, option B is the only right answer, right. Next question, uh, the intermolecular van der Waals potential is inversely proportional to R2 to the power 6, the corresponding force is proportional to 1. So, it is talking about force and potential and F and V and they are connected or related by this relation as you know, F is minus del V del R. So, it is clearly a differentiation problem and if you differentiate V with respect to R, you will get R to the power minus 7. So, answer C is the correct answer. 
and I would like to discuss similar question but the reverse way. Uh, here the potential is given, force is one thing. Now an, another question like for simple harmonic oscillator, the force is given by Hooke's law. So you have to find the potential for x. So fx is again minus del v del x. If you cross multiply then fx dx is dv. So integrate to get v as half k square that is the very popular SHO potential function as you know. According to the equipartisan principle, the predicted high temperature limiting value of the molar heat capacitive constant volume is C2H of or C2H is this. So, high temperature limit actually it, it indicates that you are talking about the classical limit or classical uh, calculation using equipartisan principle. Uh, so, n is 4. So, the degrees of freedom for vibrational motion is 2 into 3 n minus 5, 2 in red color y because for every uh, vibrational uh, motion mode of vibration there are 2 degrees of freedom uh, because the energy turn contain 2 square turns one is for potential another is for kinetic. So, a linear molecule rotational degrees of freedom is 2 and translation as usual 3. So, the total gives you 19 degrees of freedom and the total energy is 19 by 2 RT just multiplying by half RT for each degree of freedom. And now finally, Cv is del u del t at v. So, you just differentiate uh, 19 by 2 rt with respect to temperature and you will get 19 by 2 r and that is 9.5 r option t. Okay, got it? Thank you. At 25 degrees centigrade, the solubility product of uh, CaF2 is this. Uh, now, uh, which one? Right? So, uh, you have to know the equilibrium between the un, uh, solid CaF2 and the ionic calcium 2 plus and F minus. I have disregarded the charges for convenience. So, if S is the solubility, then you know that uh, the calcium ion concentration would be S as well, but chloride ion would be twice that of calcium 2S. So, now we apply the KSP equilibrium constant formula Ca into F square and that would be 4SQ and equate it with the given value and you will get S to be 2.0 into the power of 4 and that is option number D. At 298 Kelvin, 0 0.1 molar of ammonium acetate and 0 0.14 molar of acetic, uh, molar of acetic acid are dissolved in 1 liter of water. The pH of the resulting solution is, of course, it is an application of uh, the very famous Henderson equation, pH is pK plus log of salt by acid. All the right hand side data are given in the question, just put it and you will get the final value to be 4.62. So, of course, uh, I am a bit faster, but you take your time, recheck by using a calculator uh, and get confident, okay. The next question, relationship between the Van der B coefficient of nitrogen and oxygen. So, uh, it is obviously a very trivial question because nitrogen is bigger in size and somehow you know that Van der constant B measures the molecular volume. So, B of N2 is greater than B of to option C. Well, uh, L starts and gives you M 92 percent L, then N 78 percent and then O 85 percent, right. So, uh, the overall yield of O is 1. So, let us start with that X is the starting amount. So, in the first step, it gives you 0.92 X. In the second step, 0 0.78 because it is 78 percent of the previous product. So, 0 0.78 into whatever you have got in the first step that is 0.98. Similarly, the third step is 0.85 and into 0.78 into 0.92. So, finally, it gives you 0.61x. So, the final percentage calculation 0.61x by initial x into 100 for percentage. So, it is exactly 61. Ionization energy of hydrogen atom in ground state is 13.6. The energy released in electron volt for third member of Bama series is this part. So, for this question you have to ponder that why 13.6 electron volt data is given to you and what is Bama series and what is the third member of Bama series, right. So, uh, the formula that you know that uh, that the E i p or delta E actually between the infinity and the first or ground level and that in, the indirectly gets uh, the R h value in electron volt unit 13.6. Now, what is Bama series? You follow the color uh, lines, Bama series actually uh, corresponds to that spectral lines 
uh, which originates from uh, transition from higher value of m say uh, to n where n is 2 that means from higher level to the second excited level n equal to 2. So, the red one is the first member of the power series 3 to 2, the green one is 4 to 2 the second member, the blue one is the 5 to 2 that is the uh, that we are concerned with in this question. So, 5 to 2. So, you have to find the gap between uh, of energy between n equal to 2 and n equal to 5 and again the same formula that you have already used uh, and you will get already you know Rh in the uh, initial information given in the question. So, the answer would be 2.856 electron volt. The number of degrees of freedom of liquid water in equilibrium with ice is. So, solid ice and liquid water they are in equilibrium. So, clearly the component is simply 1 the water itself, but the phases are 2 and the formula is 2 plus C minus P is F degrees of freedom. So, C is 1, P is 2 and you get 1 degrees of freedom is 1. Now, physically what does it mean? That means at best you can play with only one variable and what the variables we have at hand pressure and temperature for equilibrium. So, if you change P then P would be automatically adjusted and if you change T then P would be automatically adjusted. So, that is the meaning of degrees of freedom being 1, ok. The number of normal modes of vibration in naphthalene. So, uh, you have to know the structure or molecular formula of, uh, of naphthalene and this is given here and the molecular formula is C10H8. So, for an N atomic nonlinear molecule here N is 10 plus 8, 18. So, it is Cn minus 5, 6 because it is nonlinear. So, 3 into 18 minus 6, 48, ok. The compounds having C3 axis of symmetry are, so four diagrams are there. Now, as you know that uh, Cn axis corresponds to an angle of rotation, symmetric angle of rotation is 2 pi by n. Now, n is C here, C3, so 2 pi by 3, that means 122. So, clearly uh, in figure 1 and 3, uh, you see that uh, equivalent entities, that means either methyl in the first one and uh, bromine in the third one they are at uh, an interval of 120 degree. So, that gives you an equivalent configuration of the pressure by 120 degree. So, 1 and 3 are right options. Uh, 2 is visibly not clearly because neither of the angles of uh, between MA and ME uh, is 120. Well, uh, option 4 seems to be the right one, but uh, because the angle looks like 120, but the two methyl radicals are not in the same plane as the third one. So, it does not give you the the equivalent configuration of a one rotation. So, it is not the right. Okay. The behavior of Cl2 is closest to uh, ideal gas behavior. So, uh, you do not need to uh, use any formula or calculate anything actually. Uh, only you have to have the knowledge that uh, uh, real gas behaves ideally when temperature is too high and pressure is too low. So, out of these four options, you can easily see that option C temperature is the highest one and at the same time pressure is the least one. So, option C is the closest right ok. D orbitals involved in the hybridization to form square planar and trigonal bipyramidal geometries are. So, uh, you have to look uh, for a while at the diagram for the 5 D orbitals picture and you have to have the information that uh, in trigonal bipyramidal z direction is involved. So, uh, in the options the dz square dz square dxyz dz square the first one is for square planar and the second one is for trigonal bipyramidal. So, option d is clearly wrong because it is dyz, uh, but in all other three it is dz square. So, at this point a, b and c any one of them may be correct, but for square planar it is the xy plane is involved. So, option a and option d are out because it, it is dz square and dyz. So, in only option c is the right one, dx square minus y square for square planar and dz square for trigonal pipeline, ok. Now, let us uh, explore a few multiple select questions. The peculiarity is that uh, the options are more than one. So, for example, uh, the 3 pz orbital, uh, how many in radial and angular nodes are there. So, you have to remember actually a few formula like this. Uh, the number of nodes are theta and phi nodes uh, in terms of the quantum number n, l and ml. 
So, these are the formula and for T P Z n is 3, P Z so P orbital n is 1 and P Z so m is 0 and if you calculate then you will see that R node or radial node is 1 and theta node is 1, phi node is 0. So, total angular node is 1 plus 0 that is 1. So, we get finally 1 radial node and 1 angular node that means option A and C. The diatomic molecules that has or have 2 pi type bonds is or are. So, uh, the first one is very easy to pick up and that is N2. From Lewis structure you know this is the structure, but I would request you to explore further for C2 structure in standard text of inorganic chemistry. Wave nature of electromagnetic radiation is observed, four phenomena are there, but as you know that the first two are classical phenomena and the C and D options are typical quantum. So, in classical electromagnetic radiation uh, is described by wave nature. So, wave nature is enough for uh, explaining A and B diffraction and interference, but photoelectric effect and quantum scattering uh, they need the particle concept or aspect of light character. So, uh, option C and D uh, okay, are not for classical. A and B and the right. Well, which of the following sets of quantum numbers are or is not allowed? Not allowed. So, uh, from your HS courses, you know the basic principle uh, that uh, the conditions are for a given n, there are L values from 0 to n minus 1, and for a given L, the ML values is minus L to plus L. So, as you see from the given data, that option A and D satisfy both the conditions X and Y, A and D, because I you know for N equal to 3, the L value is 0, 1, 2, so 2 is allowed and for L equal to 2, it goes ML minus 2 to plus 2, so minus 1 is there and similarly for N equal to 5, L is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 3 is there and for L equal to 3, ML is minus 3 to plus 3, so plus 2 is equal. But what about the other two options? For B, it fails to satisfy condition Y because L equal to 0, so ML will have minus 0 to plus 0, that means 0 only, but here it is minus 1 given, so it is wrong. And option C, it fails to satisfy condition X because uh, for N equal to 3, the maximum L value can have can be 2, 0, 1, 2, but here it is given, so it is wrong. So the B and C options are the only right. The unit of the constant A, Van der Waals constant, the real gas can be expressed as. So, let us start from the Van der Waals equation itself. And as you know, this is the Van der Waals equation. So, from dimension or uh, unit consideration, you know that the term by term, so n square A by V square, the whole term should be equal in dimension to P. So, that means the n square A by V square should be pressure unit or Pascal say. So, A is Pascal into V square by n square. So, V square in SI is meter to the power 6 and by N square, so it gives you mole to the power minus 2. That means option A is the right one, but which one is the other option? Now, Pascal can be expressed as joules per meter cube. So, you just put it to get the option B, joules meter cube mole to the power minus 2. So, we see A and B are the right options. The soft Lewis base is or R. So, four options are there. And interestingly, all four are right options A, B, C, D, because simply because all have lone pair of electrons. That is the basic definition of Lewis space. Okay. So uh, here we stop. Our next video, I promise that we will come back with chemical kinetics, a rapid fire true and false type of questions, and that session four would be coming soon after puja. Thanks. Please keep on watching. Please comment and suggest on how we can improve further the content, the style of the videos, how I can serve you better. Please do subscribe and encourage your friends to subscribe and to watch videos. Till then, thanks for watching and I wish you all the best for a nice, harmonious and peaceful puja. Thanks once again.